with this little cartridge that saved the whole operation. What's up everyone, Kyle here from TTO Parts. We've got an awesome video lined up for you. Now, if you get any useful information out of this video today, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Today, we are gonna be talking about TIDGE printing, thermal inkjet printing, and we're gonna go over a nightmare of a case study. And we're gonna finish up with some testing on a TIDGE printer. First, let's go over the thermal inkjet printer. Let's talk about how it works so you get a better understanding of what's going on inside this unit. Now this is a TIG printer. This is a Cyclops CM160 series printer. And this is the ink cartridge that goes inside there. Now the ink cartridge has a set of nozzles, goes in like so, and gets locked in place. That's simple. Now I know you're probably wondering, well, how does it work? We'll start off with the ink cartridge. Uh, the ink cartridge acts like an ink reservoir. And on one face, we have our printhead with a bunch of tiny little nozzles. Each nozzle has a small heating element near the opening. So when the printhead needs to print, a small electrical pulse is sent to that heating element. The timing of this pulse happens in microseconds, so it's super fast. That pulse hits that heating element right next to our nozzles. This creates a tiny bubble of ink vapor, and this bubble will ramp up the pressure, forcing it out of the nozzle. And that's how we get a print. Before we go into that case study, let's talk pros and cons of TIG printing or thermal inkjet printing. Now, a pro is cost effective. Now, these units are much more cost effective than their counterparts, and they're really less maintenance. And, and that's because every time you get a new cartridge, you're basically getting a new head. Another pro is the high resolution or crispness detail of the prints themselves. And these things are versatile. You can have tons of different colors, inks, uh, you can have a solvent for printing on plastics or painted boxes. You can have an aqueous solution for printing on just regular cardboard boxes. Now, what are some of the cons? Well, we got to go over those as well. Ink cost over time, right? The cartridges over time will add up to a high expense. Uh, you're still looking at, and we can do this. We do this for all our customers, a price per print. Most of the price per prints I've seen are less than, you know, a tenth of a penny, but it's something that adds up over time. And the other thing is print speed. Now these things aren't gonna be as fast as your CIJ printer or your laser printers. Our job was to switch out a hot stamping machine with a thermal inkjet printer. Sounds simple enough, right? Now I've seen probably hundreds of applications over the past 10 years in this industry. And this application was a nightmare. Uh, it wasn't the setup that was a problem, right? Getting this thing on the line and printing I had it up and running within 20 minutes. These things are super easy to set up. It wasn't this one that I had, by the way. What drove me crazy was the material. I didn't know the material was gonna be an issue. <laughs> Quite frankly, we ran the test prints and everything looked pretty good. Didn't like the 600 DPI. Noticing some smearing, right? Uh, especially right when it came off the print, smeared. Okay, so we turned down the 300 DPI, a little bit less ink, a little bit less resolution, but a little bit less ink. Was adequate, we were happy, still looked good. Left for the day, put some samples in my pocket. Now, by the time I got out of the truck and back to the office, I took the samples out and they were completely missing any Best Buy date. Oh, we got a problem. What was this nightmare of a material that I was printing on? Well, quick lock tabs. You might know them as bread tabs or produce tabs. After running into this predicament, I did run to the grocery store and I went down the bread aisle just to see what other people were doing. And guess what? I'd say 99% of those tabs were marked with CIJ printers. So that's a different style printer. And that's a quick drying solvent, an MEK based solvent in most cases. We have a couple CIJ printers available. We could have ended this whole project right there. However, price was an issue for this customer. And this prompted several weeks of testing. I tested four different TIG printers, five or six different inks, all solvent-based inks, and came up short on every one of them. And then I got the CM160 in-house with this little cartridge that saved the whole operation and the customer a buttload. I remember how I said the bread tabs were all CIJ? And I could tell because of the dot matrix style prints and that was an MEK based ink. So is this. So this is an MEK thermal inkjet ink. And he passed with flying colors. Here's a video of how we tested this unit. 
really simple to put this unit together. You can see it's connected with a bunch of rods. We threw it on a piece of aluminum and had a flatbed conveyor next to it. We took those quick lock tabs, put them on the top of a box, and ran that through. We used the internal photo cell on the CM160 to get our trigger, and we told it to print every 20 millimeters after triggering, so we can get a bunch of prints on these tabs. And we put these samples through the ringer. We're gonna zoom in, and on the INS, that means we instantly wiped. I stuck my thumb on it to try and see if it would smear. So if we zoom in, we can see a little bit of smearing. Uh, look at the L. And then we got the T10. And what we did with the T10 was we used a Kleenex tissue with lotion. I scrubbed as hard as I could for 10 seconds to try to remove this. And yeah, it faded a little bit, but it looks pretty good. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you found some useful information on Tidge printing. Hit me with a comment down below if you've had to run into a situation like this before or if you've used Tidge printers at all. Let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys are using. Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you next time.